Why am I always too tired to code? What do you mean? No matter how much I sleep, I still feel tired. And even if I'm motivated to code, I get barely anything done because I'm too tired to focus. Hmm. What are your sleeping habits like? Well, before going to sleep, I like to watch YouTube while eating to relax. But sometimes I'll catch up on what I've been procrastinating by working right before sleeping, and then I'll go to sleep. Uh, and when do you go to sleep exactly? It depends. On the weekend, I'll sleep at 3 a.m., and on the week, I'll sleep at 10 p.m. to wake up on time for college. Oh my god. And what's your morning like? I'll hit the snooze button at least three times, then first thing in the morning I'll go get a cup of coffee and I'll eat some cereal with that. Do you even go outside? Unless I'm going to work, not at all. Listen, I used to be just like you years ago because I didn't care about my sleep nor health. Until one day I realized I was procrastinating coding all the time because I only ever had energy to watch YouTube. It's at this point that I realized that energy is the most important thing in our lives because without it we wouldn't be able to do anything. Keeping your energy levels high is half the battle in everything in life, not just coding. How do you win half the battle then? I fixed my energy in two steps. First, I regained my energy. Second, I learned how to keep it. So how do I regain my energy and keep it? Well. When I was just like you, I thought I could regain my energy by doing fun stuff such as playing video games and watching YouTube. Don't they? Well, no. Because your brain spends energy to beat the game or understand the video. So how do I recover my energy? Well, sleep, obviously. Sleep? I've been sleeping 10 hours a day now for a week straight and I still feel tired. And I had that same problem, too. I would sleep 10 hours a day every day. Yet I was always more and more tired, yet I still struggled to fall asleep. I decided to fix this when my grandma told me that my eye bags and purple eyes made me look like a 50-year-old homeless person with severe insomnia. Ah, uh, hell nah, that's rude, man. She was right, though. So after an intense Googling session the next morning, I found out why. The circadian rhythm. Your body regulates itself with an internal clock that tracks what time of day it is. But I already know what time of day it is. I just look at the clock. Yes, but your body doesn't. So it relies on factors such as your sunlight exposure, how long you've been awake for, and so on. So you have to start sleeping consistently at the same time every day. Ha 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 Last time I tried that, I stared at my roof for hours until I fell asleep at the time I usually go to sleep to anyways. I literally just wasted five hours of my day. The alarm I set up to wake me up early woke me up three hours later. So I turned it off, went back to sleep, and woke up at the time I usually do anyways. Me too. I stared at my roof for hours in absolute silence. The most bored I've ever been. So I stood up and I sat onto my computer chair and looked up on YouTube why this was happening. And according to Andrew Huberman, it takes roughly two to three days for your circadian rhythm to adjust itself to your new schedule. So you wasted five hours a day staring at a roof for three days straight? No, he doesn't recommend that anyway. He recommends that you wake up 15 minutes earlier every day to avoid disrupting your sleep. Not bad, but how do I stay consistent with my bedtime? I usually stay consistent for a couple days until eventually I enter a YouTube rabbit hole and I go to sleep three hours past my bedtime. And now I struggle to fall asleep all over again. Yes, this was the one flaw in my plan. I had done great for the following couple days until I played Team Fortress 2 with a couple friends and stayed up late. The next day, I couldn't sleep at the same time anymore. All of my hard work had vanished literally overnight. So on one of those sleepless nights, I researched on what could hint my circadian rhythm that it was time to sleep. Turns out that if you do the same thing every evening before sleep, your circadian rhythm will associate it with bedtime. So basically an evening routine an hour or so before sleep? Yes, exactly. And make sure you do things that calm you down and relax you, like reading a book, for example. But what if I just skip it? I'm not perfect. I'm going to skip my evening routine one day or two and mess up my circadian rhythm again. That's right. There's other ways to help your circadian rhythm get the time of day right. Like what? Start going outside and get some sunlight the moment you wake up so your eyes are fully exposed to the sun and not filtered by a window. And stop hitting the snooze button because it also destroys your circadian rhythm and only makes you feel more tired. Okay, so... Fix my circadian rhythm by waking up 15 minutes earlier every day, having an evening routine before my bedtime, sleep consistently every day, don't hit the snooze button, and... That's it? That's gonna fix my sleep? In two to three days? No. Your sleep quality is still terrible because you destroy it such as by coding before bed. How does being productive before bed destroy my sleep quality? 
Well... Although I had fixed my circadian rhythm, I was still so tired I struggled with motivation. And my grandma was still making fun of me for my eye bags and purple eyes. Brutal. I felt discouraged because I had already invested lots of time and effort, but I guessed it was because of poor sleep quality. So I added a bunch of things to make sleeping easier. Like what? Spraying lavender oils on my pillow, reading before bed, adding some relaxing background music, and I even started stretching before sleep. Those are great ideas, actually. They did help, and I recommend them, but they didn't fix the issue. This is when I realized that improving your sleep quality is more about removing things that decrease its quality than adding things that improve it. Like what? Well, back then, I was waking up at 8 a.m., and the sun started raising at 6 a.m., and that screwed up the last two hours of my sleep which is important because it's when most of your testosterone is produced. So the first thing I did was block all of the light that came into my room by buying some blackout curtains, and I already felt much better after waking up. But by far what helped the most was applying the 10-3-2-1 rule. And what do these numbers mean? 10 hours before sleep, no more caffeine. 3 hours before sleep, no more alcohol or eating. 2 hours before sleep, no more work and one hour before sleep, no more screen time. Why not work two hours before sleep? Because your brain needs time to go from work mode to rest mode. You can add relaxing habits in your evening routine that calm you down to help your brain reach rest mode faster. All right, I'm ready to fix my energy. Thank you, Giga- No! You don't even know how to keep that energy. What's the use of having amazing sleep if you destroy all that regained energy the moment you wake up with your terrible habits? What bad habits? After doing all of these good habits I've talked about earlier, I thought I was set, and I was kinda right. My sleep was perfect. The moment I woke up, I couldn't wait to tackle the day. But after a couple hours, I was already exhausted, and I already felt lazy. Why did you feel so tired so early in the day? Because of my terrible health habits. Instantly, after waking up, I started out with the first mistake of the day, drinking a large cup of coffee. Then I ate whatever I felt like eating while watching YouTube for an hour, and I already felt tired. I literally cannot see anything wrong with that routine. And how is drinking coffee first thing in the morning so bad for you? Everyone does it. It's the worst thing you could do. But why? Let's start with the basics first. Your diet. You are what you eat after all. Are the steroids part of your healthy diet? No, I am 100% natty. I'm sure you are, Giga Chad. Listen. I don't care about my health, and I don't want to be fit like you. I just want to coach. No, whoa, Jack, you don't understand. Your diet is crucial as a programmer. Your brain and body are both connected, so a healthy body means a healthy brain, too. Fine. How do I fix my diet? When I tried fixing my diet, I knew I couldn't make it perfect overnight. So I started by removing soda from my diet and drinking more water. Ideally, a gallon of water a day. But when I drink more water, I need to go to the toilet constantly. Your body will get used to it. So then I started removing other junk foods from my diet one by one, starting with my least favorite ones. And I replaced them with healthy foods foods and three months later I had already perfected my diet all right what healthy food should I eat well it's complicated so we'll make a special video about dieting in the future so subscribe right now to get notified once we upload it but for now you can start with cooking your own food from basic ingredients since it's basically guaranteed that it'll be healthy bro I'm not Gordon Ramsay I don't know how to cook that's all right you can buy a recipe book on Amazon okay but you still haven't said why I should stop drinking coffee in the morning oh yeah when I drank coffee right after waking up, the caffeine quickly blocked adenosine in my brain, which is the chemical that makes you feel tired. So I felt more energized and focused to code and even felt that it improved my memory. But after several hours, the caffeine wears off. The adenosine rushes back and my energy levels would crash. How long should I wait before drinking my coffee then? It takes 90 minutes for the adenosine to leave your brain after waking up. So wait 90 minutes and you won't feel the crash. Hmm, makes sense. So now that I fixed my diet and my caffeine intake, I added one last crucial thing exercise. I'm too broke to afford a gym subscription. I can barely even afford ramen noodles. That's okay. You can just start with a 90 second sprint outside every morning and get a gym subscription once you can afford it. You can also do some push-ups throughout the day. Okay, so to summarize, drink coffee 90 minutes after waking up, fix my diet by starting with my least favorite junk foods, drink a gallon of water a day, buy a recipe book and make your own healthy food at home, and sprint 90 seconds outside every morning. That's right. That's nice and all, but I'm a programmer. 
programmers are destined to be unhealthy because they sit on chairs 10 hours a day. Yes, because you get chair syndrome. But it's actually really easy to cure it. What scientist or study came up with that term? Me. I made it up. Oh my god. When I fixed my health, my energy levels were finally fixed. My grandma no longer roasted me on my eyes. I was full of energy from morning till noon, ready to conquer the day. And when I started coding, I was faster and sharper than ever. But after an hour or two, I felt increasingly tired. My eyes would start to hurt, and my back would start hurting from my terrible posture. And once again, I faced the same problem. I completely ran out of energy. I called it chair syndrome. My eyes would hurt because I was staring at a screen for too long, and I felt increasingly tired because my blood flow would get weaker and weaker. So after some intense research, I came up with my current work split to fix it. What is it? Research shows that the symptoms of chair syndrome show after the first hour. So every 60 to 90 minutes, I would get up from my chair and take a walk outside for five minutes while looking into the distance. And immediately after that, I'd feel refreshed and ready to code again. And how did you fix your bad posture? I slapped a sticky note onto my computer screen that had Fix Your Posture written on it. Did all of this work? Absolutely. And it worked very well when combined with Cal Newport's work split from his book Deep Work which we made a summary video of, so make sure to check it out. So here's a visual summary of everything we talked about today. Thanks. If you're grateful for this advice, then like and subscribe now. If not, you can just dislike.